into the blue corner. Let's hear it for Maya Adore. And his opponent entering into the red corner. Let's hear it for Ken O'Kane. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, introducing first Fighting out of the blue corner, he hails from Birmingham, he's 25 years old, stands 5 feet 8 inches tall, weighed in at 180 pounds. He fights for Team Pariah and has a mixed martial arts record of one contest with one loss. Let's hear it for Maya Adol! And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. He hails from Coventry. He's 23 years old, stands 6 feet 2 inches tall, weighed in at 185 pounds. He fights out of UTC and has a mixed martial arts record of four contests, three wins and one loss. Let's hear it for Ken. So back up the ranks here at Fight UK 9. I'm at about in the middleweight division between Maya Dore in the black shorts from Team Pariah and UTC's Kevin O'Kane in the blue shorts. O'Kane coming in with a very impressive three and one record. To me, Dave looks the much taller of the fighters and that may be Borat and Dore's a first choice of attack looking to neutralize the range with a big takedown if you can get one. Definitely doesn't look any uh Less thick either, Kevin O'Kane, okay Ben. He looks very big compared to his opponent. And now in mount, Dore in early difficulties here. A hook in on the right hand side, trying to slip the left one in. He might just, he's going to say, he'll throw some punches. We've got to be careful of sacrificing the position. Dore not really moving from here, shipping a lot of punishment. Got to be careful of getting flattened out. Referee Leon Roberts taking a close look at this. Dore really struggling here, right at the start of the round, not when he wanted it. Kevin O'Kane with a nice inverted trip to take the fight down. And Dan looking to land some strikes. He definitely looks the much bigger fighter for me, Ben. I'm not sure if it's Dore looking small at the middleweight or Kane looking big, but it does seem to have a big size advantage here. Beautiful short knee from O'Kane there in that, that exchange. Oh, and there's another one. I've seen people stop with those, Ben. Very underutilized. Yeah, definitely around the liver and the floating rib sort of area. Most famously, you'd see George St. Pierre stopping Matt Serra with those in the second fight, UFC 83 in Canada. A deadly weapon if used properly, and it's some. Really good top and postural control, I think it's fair to say, by UTC's Kevin O'Kane in this position. Yeah, O'Kane is content to sit here and score. He's got one hand hugging his opponent and just keeping there. Amir Dore just, just can't get out of this position, Ben. From O'Kane's point of view, why should he do anything different? He's at very, very little risk here. He's in a dominant position. He can pick the shots that he wants. There's another big knee to the side. Dory looking to land a shot if he can, but he'd really be better served to trying to scramble from that position. Easier said than done, obviously. Yeah, he's got some options. You know, he can, he can obviously, the first one being trying to scramble back to his feet. You know, there's, rolling, there's rolling attacks you could look at, rolling leg locks, that sort of thing, but generally low percentage sort of submissions there. Dory would be just happy to ride this out, Ben, and get to the end of the round. Luckily for him, obviously, amateur conditions meaning a three-minute round here. Great display of control. Now standing up. Got to be careful with the back of the head. 
I feel Liam Roberts in a prime position to warn him about those. Liam Roberts might have a little word about, I believe it was an elbow strike there, but a rough round for Mayadori. Went in to try and get the takedown, but couldn't really do anything with it. And when he was on the bottom, Dave was, to be fair, completely shut out in that round. Yeah, fantastic open period. The UTC's Kevin O'Kane. Excellent control there. I'm sure his corner will just be eager to uh, maybe, you know, tell their man to look for the finish, Bennett. Although it was complete control, Dore wasn't really making the effort to, to move out of there. Okay, maybe could have looked to take the back or, or land more of those very powerful knees he looked to. But definitely one round to the good is Kevin O'Kane. And, and from Maya Dore's point of view, Ben, I mean, what do you think he's going to be looking for? He's definitely got to avoid the grappling exchange by the looks of things. 100%. If Kane's able to do that right at the start of the round, then that when you take into consideration that both these fighters are now a, a round of the good, Dory spent that entire last round reacting, that entire last round trying to defend and trying to resolve a little bit. Okay, there just motioning he didn't have his uh, gum shield. Corner bobbed it through and we get started. Like I say, Dory's really got to think about what he's going to do here. He comes rushing in on the end of that jab, goes for the single. Maybe trying to link the hands together, but can't quite get it. And this is the spot he found himself in last time, and the almost the exact same takedown. A little ankle pick. Yeah, from Tory's point of view, Ben, he, he landed a few shots there on the feet, but clearly it looks as though the game plan might have been to look for the takedown early on, so he just reverted back to that. A bit disappointing for, from my point of view if you're, if you're looking at Dory, because like I say, he did land a couple of shots there. And now, as you say, Ben, he's, he's just given up the exact same position that he, he found so difficult in uh, the first period. Okay, and once again, going round to the back, the position that he had all the success in. And basically, it's a carbon copy thus far of the first round. That little ankle pick trip takedown, and now rotating through. Dore's really got to try and make something happen here. Because we've seen in the first round, O'Kane's got the game to... Sh shut the fight down from here effectively. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see if O'Kane looks to do something different, maybe take the back, or maybe go for the submission. But, you know, Ben, he is winning the fight in this position. I'm sure he's aware of that. Looking to take the back now, maybe. As we say, but I mean, if he can just stay in a safe position and land shots, then what reason does he have to risk it all and go for those submissions, which are obviously a lower, a lower percentage? Where he is at the minute with this control, punishing his opponent with body shots. Got one hand locked in on the left hand side. Dory's really, really struggling with this and it's not hard to see why. And now turning it over, looking to push past the hips where he can get some bigger shots off. But Dory does really well, gets himself back up to the feet, that's what he needs to do. He's got the hands linked, he has, but there's an arm in. It's going to be very... And with his opponent being a taller fighter, you're also really going to struggle to get the leverage for a, a guillotine from here from the standing position, especially with the arm in. Yeah, still fishing for that neck. It's given O'Kane okay something to think about, Ben. He's definitely fighting the hands, the hands now, excuse me. Also okay. maybe looking to pull that single himself, but he's definitely wary of it, Ben. He's wary of the neck there. Scoops that hand off in his corner, calls for him now to work. Now the danger's gone. Kevin O'Kane can look for the takedown. He gets it once again, but Dore holding him underneath and looks to try and roll through and posting off the hand to see if he can get back to his feet. He gets back up just very briefly. You've got to be careful of throwing the knees there. Yeah, he had a warning for a strike in the uh, first round. If that knee had landed, I don't want to second guess a, a referee of the quality of UFC's Leon Roberts, but could have possibly looking at a point, so he's got to be careful there, Kevin O'Kane. It didn't land, excuse me, Ben, it's by the by, of course. Very much so, but Leon in a great position to objectively assess what was happening. 
And as we see, O'Kane getting some uh, words of encouragement from his, uh, from his team there at UTC. One of the things we see to a lot with the, with Fight UK is whenever we see the representation from UTC, they're always very well schooled. They're one of the better gyms at this level, Dave. Certainly at the amateur level of coming up with a game plan and sticking to it rigidly. Yeah, I'm not sure about the um, the exact history of the gym, but I, I'm pretty sure that within the last few years, there's been um, there's been you know a few changes here and there, different sort of gyms branching off and, and different guys coming in and out on the coaching front but as you say Ben they've got a fantastic crop of fighters down there at the moment you know the likes of Yannick Bahati that we've seen on the on Fight UK Leon Leon Edwards there's a great school of guys coming out of there and it really is one of those gyms that when you see it Ben on the piece of paper you know you know that the guy coming out is going to be well rounded and obviously UFC veteran Vaughan Lee as well making up that team a great uh, great training ethic down there at UTC but Mayadur has shown in the first two rounds, Dave, he's not come here to roll over. But he'll need to do something drastically different if he's going to change the outcome of this fight. Yeah, he's had some success on the feet at the start of that round, but I'd like to see him try and strike, have a little confidence in his, in his striking, see if he can change the, uh, the current pattern of this bout. And there we see it again. Once again, he's gone for the same thing, Dave. Punches simply look to close the distance, but the problem he's having is that he's unable to get the takedown that he that he wants and to get the top position. As I say that, a huge pickup and takedown, but not able to maintain the position. Wow, credit to Kevin O'Kane, Ben, for staying calm during that, because as soon as he hit the floor, he was moving, because that was a massive takedown. But as, as he said, Miyadore, when he's, when he's coming forward with those punches, O'Kane, okay, he's got no lateral movement, he's moving straight backwards. So it is an opportunity for him to carry on punching, but he's desperate to secure the, uh, the takedown, is Maya. And, you know, at this amateur level, it's all experience and game plans for these guys will come in time. So I'm sure when his corner looks back at this fight, you know, they might go into the next one with a different game plan, shall we say, because now in the third, we're looking at it in exactly the same position as we have in the previous two rounds. Dory looking to stand back up to his feet and he has done, but he's in a very awkward position here with his, with his back given. <laughs> Maya Dore is just struggling with a relentless forward grappling attack from Kevin O'Kane. Maya might be looking for that guillotine again, but the arm is in on the other side. From Dory's point of view, Ben, he's got to look to pummel in. Leon, M Leon Roberts, excuse me, calling a timeout, just a little low blow in there. I think it was a short knee at that point. Part and parcel of the uh, the clinch game, really, Dave. Every now and then, you're going to get a knee that goes astray. Yep, yeah, didn't look a massive shot, but as we hear Joe Rogan often refer to, it depends really on the design of your cup, whether you've got that full tie steel cup, you've just got the the small, almost you know, cricketer's little uh, box. Big leg kick there from Dore. Obviously realizing he's got a sense of urgency. You've got to think, Dave, if he's, if he's had these kicks in his locker the whole time, surely now's the time to, to let him go. You see, Ben, when he's swarming his man, he doesn't look that comfortable, Kevin O'Kane. Once again up, trying to get the big takedown. He's got to be careful. And big slam downwards. Beautiful takedown from Ayadore. And now we're getting an inkling, Ben, to what he was looking for in the first two rounds because this man has got takedowns in him. chest battle this one panning out to be in a nice attempt at a sweep there from Kevin O'Kane but 
Doria's got the fight where he wanted it, but he just didn't get... With those first two rounds, Dave, I think he just didn't give himself enough time to do the work he wanted to, and a beautiful sweep up and over the top, right on the death by Kevin O'Kane. Yeah, an interesting contest. Like I say, Kevin O'Kane dominating proceedings, really, with grappling. But from my Doria's point of view, I, I think his team will go back, review the video, and maybe look at... Look at how he can react to different scenarios and fights. He obviously went out there with the intention of working takedowns, of which he showed a couple huge ones, by the way. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of action, we go to our judges' scorecards. Our judges have rendered a unanimous decision, scoring the contest 30-27, 29-28, and 29-28 in favour of your winner. From the red corner, Kev O'Kane! And let's hear it for a very gallant runner-up. Let's hear it for Maya Dawn.